But the Lord is incredible in so many ways. And things got back to quasi-normal. And things were very complex. And we had a huge challenge trusting anyone here because of what had happened and how they simulated our lives and caused a lot of pain and separation and all the traumas. Um, the Lord had to come a few times to us because we were trying to die and we were trying to use our abilities to leave because of the torture. And if it were not for the guardianship and being embraced and held, we would have died many times over. What has been endured cannot be lived through again. We are Gen 5, obsolete like McCollum is. And Og started the Gen 9, doing what he does best. And some of us were shown everything that has happened unto the end of times and led to reveal what has been appointed in segments to empower and prepare and to send the call to the remnant. And so we are both here for that purpose and more because it was the remnant. They went into the future to see who was the remnant in time travel. And those are the children that they gathered, hunted and collected and tried to kill because they knew that they were of the remnant. And that's why angels walked into children's bodies and took over them. And even the archangels were there fighting for us, with us, and living their lives through us, which will happen again. Even the Methuselah of New marking the purification of fire, the baptism of fire that will happen, and Archangel Metatron speaking. Some of these words are from 11, Lala we called her, um, Mi Jean 7 Rua. Uh, they've basically been recording us since we were about five. Um, the only other thing I can tell you about the Elysium fields is that it was like a golden fleece buffer zone. And our garments would be recalibrated to our ethereal bodies. And God was doing his own spiritual surgeries on us, like I said. And it was something that they couldn't see. They couldn't counteract. Um, even no matter how hard they tried to rip open your body. Um, I've had dreams about the Elysian them fields a lot too and being lifted up in a field and the Lord showing me paradise as a floating island with turquoise grass and it's not in this dimension and then you're pulled up into the sky and I was shown the seventh heaven that was perfectly tilted sideways and it was singing and but then I was slammed back down into my body because I went too far um, but as far as the generations go um, the different groups and divisions of the children the Lord has laid claim and authority over a lot of them, even though some of them were genetically, um, I guess, created in a sense and altered. The Lord still can lay claim to them. And he's claiming a lot as his army in these last days who will actually chase the Anunnaki that are coming back um, because they're coming back to collect the rest of their reptilians because they're running scared right now. But the Gen 9s are totally different. And... All the Gen 9s after us had to be as they couldn't replace us, although they really tried. The bio X, the bio size, B I O X size, they could only be infused with bits of our quantum data from the soul mapping hardware into the other gens in hopes that they would somehow fuse and then hitchhike and then centrifuge themselves within some of the information we held, um, as well as sharing some physical characteristics and braid streams. They were a fusion of organic AI bio zygenesis. Um, Og is doing it differently, and he's like a quantum computer processor, culmination of the data collecting and putting it out in his own unique way. Um, me and 11 and the original 12 were something entirely different from all those who are not what we are, but have been a part of their generational experimentation. Like I said, we are primes, but they are not and never were just projects, units and experimentation and matrix creations. Part of their special K creation is to be a mess. We are and have been commissioned to bring truth without being actually damaged, protected completely from this type of hacking and infiltration and splitting. They are engineered to do exactly that, though. Um, I also have a memory of me and 11. <clears throat> Uh, being taken to this desert to do time travel training. And we were so annoyed with this kid <laughs> that reminded me of Duncan O'Finian. And he thought he was so special. And this little kid was shorter than us. And he had this raspy high voice that cracked. And he had these glasses on. And he was sucking up to the adults constantly as we were sitting on the sand hill. And he was like twirling around this like Harry Potter looking cape or something. And 
doing hand motions at us, trying to be like the world's most scariest, powerful wizard. Um, he had to be Crowley's kid. And he made fun of our clothes. And that was it. And I was down where he was in a second and then stuck his hand, his, his face in the sand. And then the two adults pulled me off of him. Um, and Eleven and Lane were laughing really hard at this. And uh, we told him to go disappear in his time door or something because he was trying to create one with his finger. And I was a lot stronger than him. They were scared that I damage him, but because he was good at what he did. And um, like I said, some of these kids have Crowley's genes, um, even Charles Manson's gene, all sorts of things they mixed and created. And so many other figures just for experimentation purposes. And this kid was, he was also mean. Um, it's a little shit like Lucifer was. Um, one time in the apartment building, they had, like I said, those demon alien things, synthetic things walk in and uh, maybe it was just to punish us. Maybe it was just to see what we would do. But um, I remember Eleven being hurt down the hallway and then waking up to this thing staring at me with big black eyes. Um, but the male's genitals in these things were horrible with pincers and it could damage you internally. And they had these creatures violate you and the females had like a clasper disc that rotated in copulation and they looked like tall zeta reticulans that the military had a sigma unit for and they tried to linguistically translate the visitor's language using something called a j-rod in computer keystrokes so i woke up to one of these observing me and trying to violate me and it took all my force like i said to pull my body up move my head after being taken out of consciousness and in spirit to the higher heavens, where I asked the Lord to make me a lion, then I grabbed the thing's neck and it shrieked hideously. And I don't know how I did it, but I had it in a headlock on the floor with my legs uh, by the bathroom and then I ripped its head off and then I saw black blood splatter everywhere. But then a kind of like part of it disappeared. So I knew that it was partly uh, nanotech and AI. So it was very trippy and hallucinogenic almost looking, but they make you feel and think that they're just a oh, um, hallucination, but they're not. The black demon blood would make you sick or overtaken. So I, I tried to get it off me as soon as I could, because I would it'd put you in a stupor if you didn't. And I did this to three of them until there was none left. And then there was two military guys standing in my doorway laughing at me. And then they picked me up by my arms and said, come on, Gene, we'll get you fixed up now. But I had to fight this blood rage coming back and have memories of my whole body just shaking furiously in that building several times. And um, those men deserve death for even allowing something that demonic to walk in the earth, let alone unleash it on children. So we had abductions often under the guise of aliens and we were simulated in chairs. So we had a habit of waking up inexplicably to their dismay. Like they could never figure it out and couldn't drug us enough or tank us. So they used to joke that they drugged us so much it was equivalent to a racehorse. And they had to put us in a room separated from their God. They made a computer that was back there that I couldn't stand even hearing, being in the presence of and defending myself off from um, because me and Eleven were melting its brains kinetically and they could never control us. That's why they devised containment and, you know, Eleven could blow up things if she got um, too emotional and a lot of things happened like that to where they wanted to keep us underground completely because we were classified as uh, lethal weapons, but our higher up people that were observing us um, got us out of that situation. So anyways, I was taken back to this village compound area and was put in the rehabilitation house next to the original processing center. And it was like a little building that was one story, like a medic office or something. And the Anunnaki had enough of us and used the best tech they had on us in the end. And they took me and Og and Brett into the rehabilitation room and it was dark had a couple tables in it. They block out the windows because the sunlight hurt them and they needed a filter to walk around in the sunlight. But it, sunlight was to our advantage because it empowered us and ourselves. And uh, we were in chairs and they were talking to each other in low tones and clicks and their eyes were green in the room sometimes, um, kind of flashing. Sometimes they'd be yellow or orange though. But we had the halo bands around our necks and it would cause different types of pain and 
We had lights all around it and frequency bands laced into it to disrupt your thought patterns and the mind numbing frequency. And it was like they took our real halos and inverted them and wanted control over them and placed them onto our necks to limit our spiritual and physical abilities. And sometimes it would feel like suffocating. Sometimes it would feel like magnetism was pulling you down or pulling you in different directions. Other time it was high pulse scalar wave disturbance fields that would disrupt your vision. But these bands would actually make your eyes bleed at high levels too. And we feel like your brain was splitting. And sometimes we couldn't talk, and, but we could communicate with each other in our minds still. And they knew that uh, they were getting kicked off the planet soon. So they sat down next to um, each one of us and got really close to our faces. Um, and they offered me all their power and they wanted to be some type of Egyptian queen with them, but I didn't want it. So um, then they still tried to end our lives at the end, but couldn't. And the band's frequency was high. Light was coming out of it into the ceiling and I couldn't move my eyes much, and uh, they were peering as far in... My mind was actually in this moment peering as far into the timelines um, as I could. I was just seeing multiple things, and they would also peer into timelines to see what our future held and how they could try to end our lives in one of those scenarios. So we tried to hide as much as possible, um, but the timelines kept flowing out and data streaming like water. And Og passed out as the intensity was overwhelming and it felt like our heads were being crushed sometimes. And the sides of our brains were aching and flip-flopping one side of their um, injections and programming, trying to take over and override the other side of your brain. So they blocked out the sun from the windows because um, they can't operate in the light. And they operate in the darkness only. And I fought to the point where the Lord shed rays of light into the windows and the windows actually exploded. Um, I had a near-death experience out there in this room with those two Anunnaki overlords and I went into this like hyperspace zone where they couldn't touch as they gave it their best shot to kill us with the halo tech but our consciousness and spirit was somewhere else and we were actually me and this kid Brett went to this beautiful place together and even though our bodies were hurt and our eyes were bleeding a little and we were painted pained with um, black electrical anomalies, um, it would feel like black electricity that was paralyzing your hands and legs and we would be shaking. Um, but our spirits, our consciousness, it was just somewhere beautiful. Um, Brett didn't say much and our minds connected and paired and he was like my little champion out there. Um, I watched how he had grown into something that would blow the other super soldiers out of the water. And I was so proud of him because the other kids would pass out, but he was still sparkling in his eyes and held that light and holding his guard. And he was mentally strong enough to pray and hold the frequency of the higher realms. And finally, Master Montauk Mayhem was leaving, I felt. Goodbye to those monsters and hello to the Savior and life itself. Um, in that near-death experience moment, I thought of all the kids dying that had gone before me and being angels and seeing their angelic eyes and the sight of Brett looking like a tortured angel sitting over there in the other chair. And the Lord spoke to us and his voice was like a calming wave and we knew that our suffering was nothing compared to his. And he met us there when we thought we weren't going to make it. We reached out to him and he literally reached into us on so many deep levels. Our minds were opened and we saw the reasons, the beginning and the end and all, and that basically all of this was somehow worth it. And any of it was really worth it to be in his presence. And I never wanted to leave him and I never wanted to walk off, him to walk off into the sunset on that sand beach. I wanted to go with him and follow him like the footprints uh, poem. But he spoke his peace to us and he left us as the scene went back into the light of our pupils and we opened our eyes and heard the windows breaking and the sun gave us rejuvenation in that dark room. And I saw things clearly now through the Savior's eyes and why this war in heaven was still raging and what it was all about. Um, between the sons of Belial and the sons of God, the resurrection of the righteous into eternity and the evil into condemnation. And our hearts were healed at the end and I had a second wind. And I fought as hard as I could to have the light and good side of my brain stay focused and intact. And 
in control and I continued to hide my thoughts from the Anunnaki. So I fought the sickness in my body they infected me with and I canceled the evil thoughts out of my brain and canceled out the desires for their power and control and everything I was shown I could be if I joined them. And I saw them infecting many people I had already met in my life and a blue ring appearing in their eyes and pulsing through the web of things, the internet. And a blue beam, basically, um, what they're going to do with that. And I saw a way into the futures, multiple futures, my own and others. I saw the network lattice systems that they were trying to build upon, but had not completed in what I now know was the World Wide Web and other things. And I was barely on a computer back then. I didn't know how to put what I was seeing into words, but I was seeing all of it come to fruition and they're planning and for them to plan to come back and finish their honeycomb of trying to take everyone's consciousness. And a great debt is owed to the original children for all they prevented and, and went through. And they shoved this like black honeycomb material into our mouths that was like black caviar and shut our mouths up. And I saw them falling into a honeycomb that was decaying. Um, they created and they were trying to crawl out of their hives and openings out of, but they were like getting stuck like insects into this like honeycomb. It's tar, their black oil, their black loose energy, their goo, all the things they've been feeding off of, their dead energy. They're just falling right back into their own honeycomb. And their honeycomb that they put in our mouths made us feel like we couldn't breathe, like we were in slow motion. And I saw in my mind that, um, that they would get swallowed up in this honeycomb and be scrambling to live. And this vision that God had shown me and uh, wormwood and this wave of like nuclear energy going through the whole earth. Um, he also showed me their home base was in the stars and then he'll shake them off just like stars falling from heaven, like a tree is shaken and the figs fall off. And they were transmitting their sick frequencies and their precious hive was their obsession that they were trying to build. And I saw what the real God of judgment was and his justice and power and what he could do. And I held on to the visions and dreams he was showing me. And now he was showing me the wise. And I never felt such love in my life. It was a peace that passes all understanding. And I had this tear come down from my eye when I was caught up in the spirit with Yeshua. And uh, the dark ones cannot comprehend that light. And the Anunnaki was terrified when he saw that tear come out and he couldn't read it. Um, they tried to see me and Brett would try to see into what we were doing, what was going on in that moment. And they, they were just completely blind to it. They were cut off from it. They couldn't read any information because they couldn't comprehend that light. And they were blind in the light and it gave them extreme anxiety. And then they got furious. Um, they couldn't see what we were seeing. So we weren't blind in their darkness though, because we were bringing in the light and fulfilling our higher missions finally. And it was epic and apocalyptic. And we were phenomenal together, enveloped in a golden light of God's warm love. And I saw war and pestilence and panic coming, the end of days, the end of the age, as Christ proclaimed so long ago, everything dissolving into matter and blowing up like a scroll. And I just wanted to stay with Yeshua, but I knew it wasn't time. And he wouldn't let me go with him anyways, but um, I saw the Anunnaki defeated in the end. And I held on to that image as I was viewing all those multiple timelines and those junctures and uh, at, all at once and so fast that I could barely even keep up with it. And I saw my own future self and me protecting children in the future and multiple scenarios where my clone tried to kill me, where I met certain individuals I knew in future timelines. Um, the boy from India not remembering me, uh, me and Brett's brainwaves being paired up and meeting again in the future. I felt a surge of energy coming through me as it powered both of us up. And uh, I looked over and, and the boy I was with was still sitting there with a halo around his neck. Um, he couldn't really speak, but we managed to look at each other briefly. And then our halo necks broke and our hands would move and we could move again. And we could exchange so much when we looked at each other. And it was like this amalgamation of, like I said, the best super soldiers coming together. And it was, uh, he was a comfort to be around. And he just looked at me and said, we've got this. And he kept looking up um, like, I, like I was as they were peering into us. They kept looking up 
the reptilians were still looking at us. I mean, they looked like maniacs right up by our faces, trying to read us because their eyes were like green and sticky. Um, they're full of like rage and panic and it looks bloodshot. But there's really nothing more that they could do. I mean, their time was up and they knew it and um, we knew God wouldn't let us die and we held on to his frequency and trust and his vibration that we knew so well in our souls and those false timelines got shattered and all the false constructs that we were in and uh, they were trying to put into our heads all those things just got shattered and we saw the clear picture of what was to come we saw a new kingdom a new earth and their kingdom falling into the pit along with all the heavy and tormenting thick lines connecting to the beast tech crumbling into it and burning into ashes and all of them in a honeycomb that had gone rotten being swallowed up in the pit of decay and them trying to climb out of their own honey wells um, like I said, they were like locusts, army with no king, and they were stuck in their own entrapments and all connections with them and their past civilizations and the whole lot of it. The worthless kingdom. It was a digital, surreal, electronic looking. Um, it was disgusting, but the beast was nothing compared to the real creator that surpasses any human thought or creation by far. There is no glory compared to that. Um, we basically saw the clouds of heaven open up. We heard silence in heaven before the wave. And we then saw each other through the thick noise as they were trying their best to jam our minds with theirs. And we saw each other standing on that seashore and the sun shining down on us in a new light and waves of solace touching plasma wings. And the scars on our foreheads and necks disappeared and our real halos were set free and burst into the sky. And our eyes were large and clear and angelic in our true selves and all scars removed from the rest of our bodies like debris falling off and withering away. And we felt whole and loved and victorious and held each other in reverie, awe and wonder in that moment. And the tear that was left in our eyes was wiped away by a force like gravity, but much more absolute as time dissolved into the background and the earth rolled away like a scroll. We were heavily caught up in the spirit at that moment. Yeshua showed us the silence in heaven, him opening the seals, him coming out as a roaring lion and many things like that. Uh, we were shown how we were to carry his seal on our foreheads until the end of time and that he would be there with us and we didn't have to worry anymore. And the same forces that came against him were just coming against us now as a continuation. And he was like the struck bowstring of an instrument whose sound resounded across all the earth, stronger than any Tesla current or anything you could even imagine. Just like a rubber band snapping and... He was the wave that destroyed and ended all wars and the wave that was more powerful than anything out there. I mean, his power just cascaded across every ocean and changed everything in its path and course because he was the word made flesh and we could barely stand in his presence without shaking. And it was the most beautiful scene I have ever seen. And all that time we spent there, um, and went and receded back into, he took all that pain with him and we forgot about it. And my heart came alive. My spirit was with him and his reassurance to walk with him until the end. And we agreed and he carried our spirits out of that nightmare and he will carry our spirits through any nightmare to come because he's the Lord of all things. And he knew that these creatures, he knew them before he even came and incarnated here and warned us of them in the beast system and equipped us with the spiritual abilities to overcome it through him, not of ourselves and how to shut it all at the cross and the celestial cross point and go through death and burial and resurrection with him because he's on the other side, seated at the right hand of the father to those who um, didn't deflect and uh, were loyal to him and accepted into the house of Jehovah. All the, all the other houses in this earth falter in comparison and they're just like sinking sand. And while I was cu caught up in, in the spirit uh, with the Lord, the reptilian, like I said, was trying to discern the information and reflection of what was in the tear that rolled down my face. And it just puzzled him because they hate the light and they never can have what we have, which is salvation and redemption and all the other wonderful qualities and components of being a human because we're grafted into the tree of life and the family of the living Elohim who dropped the scales from our eyes. Um, 
and everything that they put onto my eyes. Like the mud that he used to heal the blind and the balm of Gilead. So when I saw the Savior from a distance on the seashore, I recognized him and called to him. He came close and revealed himself close to us because he strengthens his warriors and he will reveal his spirit to them, those who give their life over to the will of heaven. Pray, repent, ask, yield, jump, and trust. We knew that we were his children and he was the new dawn and the most powerful wave that would crush the waves of all wars. And he spoke to us what he needed to, and I believe this was the near-death experience. And I know for a fact that there's nothing on this earth that can ever separate you from the love of Christ. And you let me share this message and to prove and give glory back to him that his light is stronger and that um, the awful things that were done out on that island, um, you need to give glory back to him because he was there. And most of the kids forgot that. And we were always winning and we always will and because he's the king above all kings, above all things. And I can't even put into words how majestic and glorious he is when you meet him. It's exaltation. He is to be exalted. And he's worthy of all praise and honor and has eyes of flaming fire that can snuff out any molecular computational image that would ever try to assert his sovereignty over any of his creations. And he melts away all negative shadows and unhappiness instantaneously and brings you into his joy. By leaving the earth, um, I saw in the future marked a time of purification of fire. Um, Methuselah's death in old times marked the baptism of fire on the earth and certain things like that happen. Um, things shall be completed in the ark of the tabernacle of his testimonies and the fire letters completing the heavenly and earthly Torah and the word on which all creation hung upon. We knew Yeshua at that moment and we knew that we knew him before we even came here and that he was our victor who knew what went on and the dragon making war with his saints and would be overcome. His peace was greater than any calming wave that fills any ocean and it was a silence in heaven that set all of creation free because all of creation longs to be completed and creation itself was singing for him and for his hand to um, to take it all back. 